Good morning everybody. Welcome along to the first vlog of 2020 and well, none of your soppy New Year's rubbish. We're getting straight in to action. Uh, we're going to slow down a little bit this year perhaps. It's been two years that I've been vlogging now. The new year marks the start of the, uh, the vlogs. I think we've done 570-ish, which is quite a lot of videos and it has been quite a chore. I've not got everything done in that, in that time that I wanted to, but god damn, we got a lot done. So I've come in this morning, I've just turned a few of the um, machines on, we've got the pump for the HLT on, got the pump for the mash tun on, just recirculate, I'll have some cleaning water, some caustic in the pipes over the uh, couple of weeks that I wasn't in here, just to kind of clean them up a touch, you know. So we're recirculating all that again today. And then I've also got to start a few jobs in terms of maintenance. So I had to swap the van for the car with Stuart over Christmas because the battery had gone flat. Uh, I don't know if it's a battery thing. I don't think it's the alternator that is putting out 14.4 volts. So I don't think it's that. Could be the battery. And also the steering's a little bit funny on the van. So I'm gonna get under the hood today, have a look whether I can just hopefully top up the power steering fluid, although why it's, it would be low, I don't know. And also, we've got to tidy up in here a fair amount, move some casks, clean some empties, and make room because ultimately I want to pull the van into the unit so we can give it a good service without having to do it on the slope of the, uh, of the front yard because obviously I won't be able to get any level readings of any fluids in there if we're pointing up the way. So I'm gonna jump in the van, hopefully she'll start, uh, and back her in once I've moved all of this tackle that's kind of just, you know, all over the place. Mainly these casks down there. Oh no, they're over there, so I can pull her in. So uh, let's get on with that. Wow, there's a lot more moving about than I anticipated, and that is tighter than it used to be. Thanks to these tanks being in here, but we are in and we've got room to walk down the side. So I'm just going to drop these shutter doors and then, then we're going to have a look under the bonnet. So that's the uh, coolant, windscreen wiper, oil, we'll check that as well while we're here. Power steering fluid, brake fluid, oil refill. And of course no battery, because in these transits, yeah, they put the battery behind the driver's seat and it is really, really hard to get to. And they've got this horrible crappy strap that doesn't really do it any justice and it's all made of metal and you're undoing all the terminals. And if you don't take them off in the right order, you're gonna end up arcing to the, to the chassis. It's awful, bad, bad design. There's loads of room here. There's loads of room here for a battery. Like put two in. But well, that's four for you. Always cocking you over. Anyway, I'm gonna check the levels. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just spray down all the caps. So when I take them off, I'm not gonna be putting, just get these two, putting any dust and dirt and crap and whatever else in into the fluid. So let's get these cleaned off. And I'm also cleaning the maximum, minimum indicators on the side of the reservoir tanks. So I can indeed see what the levels are before we open them up and top them up if needed. Just clean off the oil cap. Same over here with the coolant and screen wash. Why is that open? Oh, well, I wonder what who's been in there. Nosing around. And then just the uh, dipstick, if you like. Yeah, there's one operating this rag right now. <laughs> Clean off the dipstick. 
and uh, in fact while we're here I'm sure we could have a bit of a look a little bit of a lucky loo it's been off for five minutes so we should be back to draining in the sump oh, let's have a go completely submerged maybe there's too much oil in that I'll have to have a look in the manual to double check so that took a lot longer than I thought it would look it's got dark so we've been to um, the motor spares place and I've decided to punt for a new battery 100 quid job done shouldn't have to worry about it anymore we've got some house steering fluid CHF version apparently for this particular van and then just some screen wash concentrate so I'm gonna have to go into the unit and grab a socket set as you can see the battery for the transit is behind the seat in the uh, in the cab so I'll just go and get some tools and we'll whip this out so now we've actually got the van sorted out I have to just use the table saw for a moment to cut a couple of shelves that are going to go on the worktop that we put into the porch at home if you've not seen it you will at the end of this video because I will take you back and show you the bar that we've made I think you might have already seen it but if you haven't we'll show you the bar or the kegerator if you like and I'll show you the shelving that we put in just to tidy up the whole area oh this isn't going to work we need 600 and then we need 425 it's just short hmm right we may be able to do this get three out of it is what I'm hoping three um, shelves anyway the shelves are for the bottom of the worktop that we've put in the porch and they want to be 600 by 425 mil but this is just short by about 10 mil for me to get three out of it so I know I could get two good shelves out of this or do I push it and get two good shelves and two slightly short shelves I think we'll go with the slightly short shelves because that means at least I'll still be able to fit them. They'll be short on the width. You'll see what I mean when we get them in. But uh, is it really worth wasting half of this board and then cutting another one? I don't think so. So this is actually what in many industries will be called optimizing your stock so let's just have another look again overall width we've got 1020 so if we come across and cut at 420 then we're going to have some 600 mil boards yeah that should do us then let's set the fence for 420 there we go let's wind the blade up Come on you bugger, it's harder to wind up than it is to wind down, don't ask me why, there we go, bit of uh, eye protection, ear protection and uh, turn down the volume.
So that's two of the shelves put. That. And then out of this off cut, we're just going to set the fence now to 600. There he is. And we'll get a third. Just like that. So in total we'll actually need five or six shelves. So I do have another section that's 1200 on the height and uh, 450 on the width. So I'm gonna go and get that, cut that. And then we'll have our five shelves for taking home. So I was at the other end of the unit just doing a little bit of tidying up after cutting that wood and I noticed that the cooler for the tanks had chilled the glycol to minus 20 degrees centigrade which uh, well considering it's set for minus 7 is a considerable amount colder and of course it was a failed relay. I've just thrown it in the bin. Let's see if I can fish it out. Probably not now, actually. I think it's gone right down to the bottom. That's there, look. So, if I do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll see that one of them is a lot darker than the other. So, before I put this relay in, I'm going to have to remove the LED and resistor at the top so it doesn't overheat. But while we've got the top of the unit off, you can see how I've set it all up. So obviously there would have been another uh, motor on the top here for blowing the air into the room because this was an AC unit. But I've removed that, cut off the shaft there, uh, it was a squirrel cage motor. There's one on the other side underneath here. We've kept the uh, start capacitor and over there is the run capacitor. We've got a, 20, a 12 volt uh, power supply, which is what is, I think, I can't be right. Oh, that's 240. What's that 12 volt power supply? Oh, that 12 volt power supply is running this little cooling fan in here. So this squirrel cage fan can get a little bit hot sometimes so that just gives us a little bit of cooling recirculation inside there and then um, the STC is switching this relay which turns the whole shebang on and off and then of course the rest of the cooling pipes go into the glycol reservoir which is there so yeah I just come over here to kind of tidy things up a little bit and see if I can turn it on there we go, minus 21 degrees C, not very good. Also need to get rid of, look at that, that's the damp from the outside of this brickwork. That needs treating, but it's never gonna friggin' stop, because obviously we had to have a new roof panel replaced last year because of all this moisture on the wall. We'll just keep painting it, keep on top of it, I'm sure we'll get over it one day. Anyway, we need to take the resistor and LED out of this, plug that back into the little relay socket, and then this thing should work normal again. That's what I love about these little relays. They're just easily changeable, and if anything fails, it normally is these. So most of you will have seen me do this a dozen times. But I suppose, for anyone new to the channel, it's always worth showing them what and why we're doing certain things. So these particular relays, I'll give you the code off the casing in a minute, but they're dead easy to find. Uh, let's have a look. L, Y, 2, N, J. 
uh, if you can make that out on there. So these are really cheap on eBay. It says Omeron, but I don't think they are. I think these are a knockoff. And you can get 12, 24 volt DC, 110 volt AC, 220 volt AC coils on these things. Get into the frame, my friend. And uh, whilst they have uh, double poles on the front, common, and then your two uh, coil contacts on the back here, they also come with a little power on indicator LED and a resistor in line to throttle the current. So this is powered 240 volt at mains or 220, 240 in my case. And this little resistor just limits, limits the current into the LED so it doesn't pop. But we don't need that because that resistor gets really, really hot. So what I like to do is remove it from the circuit completely, put it back together and then pop this back in and that gives us an extra six months or so on these relays because when they do burn out they tend to kind of fail closed circuit uh, which isn't always the best policy I, I'm sure but uh, most of the applications I have them on have secondary fail safes in there as well. For instance, the cooler that we've got this on at the moment actually has an over temperature thermistor. I think it's a thermistor, something like that. Uh, that when the temperature on the squirrel cage motor gets too high, it breaks the circuit. Uh, it's like over temperature protection for the whole thing. And the same in the compressor as well for the uh, chiller. So if it fails open circuit or closed circuit, sorry, then there's other parts of the circuitry which will take care of it. But you can see, because obviously it's in a cold and moist environment, the contacts are looking a little bit brown and grubby. And so is this uh, kind of captain tape, whatever it is, on the coils. There we go in there, you can see behind this tape, we do indeed have all the coils in there, so let's just take this spring off, we'll take the whole thing out and actually have a look at the contacts. Oh, well, they look pretty good. Ah, there we go. Look at that one there. That one's definitely been chewed up. So a bit of moisture, a bit of current kind of makes a mess of it and the same can be said in there if we can just see in there for that contact as well the one that it was touching made a mess of it so we may as well completely take this thing apart now haven't we so normally open normally closed well that's your common contactor plate actually then you've got normally open normally closed on here which are these here we can pull them out if we like and then we can have a look at that contact in there and yeah indeed it does look a little bit messy and probably a little bit close for the camera there so slip them out as well there's the messy one Let's get this little beauty out see the contacts that aren't actually carrying any current like this for instance well, they're, they're perfectly fine because, of course, it is the sparks from when the contacts engage which causes a little bit of arcing. And then look at all this lot. So this failed closed. And you wouldn't think that all this would come off, but I think I cut it when I went in to take the actual bit of paper off. So maybe I damaged that. Let's see if we can pull this back section away. Oh, that's really solid. Oh, there's a little screw under there, look. Well, we're in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's take that screw out and have a, have a look. There we go. So that's the basal platen, or the base plate. I think this plastic thing comes off as well, yeah. And then all of this is pressed into, the coils are pressed into this little kind of retaining mount with the screw, hold it all in place and uh, I imagine 
the more current that we have going through these, the less windings there will be. I don't know, maybe I need to be corrected on that one. But yeah, there's a heck of a lot of copper in here. Check it all out, God. Golden auburn hair of the relay. Wow, look at it all. It's really, really, really fine. It is like baby's hair. Anyway, I think that's as deep as we're going to get into this thing. So, uh, a little bit of a digression there. Maybe you've learned something. I have. I didn't realise there was that much copper in there, to be honest. Look at that. Like my beard. Looks like I've had a haircut. Anyway, let's get this other relay back in. Make sure that there's no little strands of copper on there. Arcing any of the, t bridging any of the terminals out. We'll pop this back in and uh, fire up the band. And the final job of the day before we go home. These doors are just plywood and foam insulation. They don't have any protection on them apart from a little bit of blackboard paint in the corner. And when I'm spraying down they get wet and you can see it on the bottom of the panels. So what I'm going to be doing is just hitting them with a little bit of quick drying vanish just to seal them. I do want to paint them at some point. Maybe even put some branding on there. You know, like the bottle labels or the beer logos, something like that. So where is that varnish? Here we go. I'm not really recommending this stuff. The quick drying varnish from Wilco's is probably the best on the market, but we've got some of this floor varnish and I just want to use it up to get rid of the tin before it actually goes hard in there. So I'm just going to ping the lid off. You know, I'm not going to take a long time applying this. I'm not going to do a professional job. It's just going to be, well, it has started to go hard in the tin already. Look at that. Might not be applying varnish after all. Oh no. It's got a skin. Oh my. It's kind of set. It's like a sheet of ice on the top. Yeah, we do want to get it used up then, don't we? Otherwise it's going to be no good in a very, very short space of time. So I'm going to crack on with this and uh, I'm not dicking around. I'm just going to roll it on. I think that'll be fine. And uh, just leave it here to dry over the next few days. And that's shallot, folks. We managed to get the Vanished to spread, it was awfully thick. So, one door, two doors, three doors, four doors, and then we'll leave the door off the cold room tonight. It is eight degrees in the brewery, that's not too bad. Ah, still got to put that fan back on the wall. Hmm, no urgency. Maybe another coat of varnish for the frame, seeing as I've got it out. Uh, so, it's time to go home. Are you ready Gemma? I'm ready. You're, you're ready are you? Well I'm nearly ready. Okay. By the time you turn the lights off I'll be ready. Sweet. Right then, turn them lights off. <laughs> Abigail's up there as well so we shouted Abs. Abby. Come on darling we're gonna go home. Yay. She's excited about that. So one more thing to do when I get home, look at the mop, is uh, put the shelves under the shelving <laughs> and uh, pour a pint onto the fantastic new kegerator. So let's go and do that now. And here we go folks, we are home and this is where the shelves are going. Just underneath 
this section there, like that. We've got one there. We've got one, that's a cabbage from Spider's allotment, but we've got one to go in there. And then if we move these crispies, the final one, the final piece of the puzzle, as you'll see, just goes in, hello, here. There we go. That's a bit tight. There we are. So then, we now have a bit more storage outside with underneath the workbench and on the workbench, meaning that we can now come out here and do a few projects like the soap making and that kind of stuff without making a mess in the kitchen. And as promised, we'll be pulling a beer from the new kegerator before I settle down. A little bit foamy, too much CO2 in this porter. But I'm sure I'll figure that out another day. Just, uh, I may as well just drink it all to be fair. Or of course I can just take off the nitro spout and just have it coming out like so. So come on then, let's pull this foam off. I'm wasting a little bit of beer here and now. But we do want to have a drink for the camera. Oh yes. How's that? That looks bloody glorious, doesn't it? Oh, just check that out, folks. Oh, it's lovely. So yeah, believe it or not, actually that last hour at work really tired me out. You'd have thought, wouldn't you, that I might have got a bit of a rest from, you know, having a bit of time off over Christmas, but I'm not really the kind of person who likes to have time off, because I just generally just kind of sit around drinking. Oh, that's superb. And whilst I enjoy it, it's not good for the body, of course. So, anyway, before we go, I will treat everybody to a dose of Chance and Reggie to sign out with. We'll see you on the next one. Hello. Hello, Reg. Hello, buddy. Come on, Chance. Reg. Come on, Chance. Oh, he's shot in the house. He's just shot in the house. Oh, look at the nutcase. Absolutely mental. He's a happy boy. <laughs> and you're a good boy too, Chance, aren't you? You're a little bit more sort of like, good boy. Say bye to everyone then. Bye everybody.